Got to make sure you have the condoms on deck in Vegas because, you know, prostitution is legal out here. You know about that, right, dog? You know yeah, about yeah. that. That's how they got me to get the, the restaurant here. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Before we start this video, this video was brought to you by the Bump app, which is the best app for buying and selling sneakers and clothes and vintage stuff. I definitely need to use it, and I'm definitely on it because I need to get rid of like 90% of this shit right here now that I've moved. So watch the video and stay tuned. I got you with more details about the Bump app. All right, y'all, so as you know, I started a series where I interview entrepreneurs and people doing their thing out here in these streets, but mainly I try to highlight Asian entrepreneurs because I'm trying to help people that are represented for my people, you know, because it's not a lot of us out there doing it. So we're out here in Las Vegas, Nevada, about to interview my dude, Roy Choi, who kills it in the culinary game. He owns mad restaurants, mad food trucks, and he likes to bring his own little flavor to the traditional culinary world, and we're gonna stop by his new restaurant, Best Friend, and see what he got going on. <laughs> Roy. 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 Boy, what's good, man? First good. of all, I appreciate you making Thank time you. for us, man. Um, so if y'all don't know about this man, Roy Choi, he's like, I feel like you are, you walk that line you are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't even put me in the words. Yeah. There ain't no words Man, to describe bro, what I do. No. This, it's true. I mean, you yeah. over here, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. got you got your flannel, you got your beanie, yeah. you're real like Asian choloed out right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I feel like that's dope that you're respected kind of on both sides of the spectrum, you know? Yeah, I guess because of where I come from and this whole thing happened to me by accident, mm -hmm. you know, making the Kogi tacos, selling them on the street and all that. I, you know, I was, there in the early stages of everything, like you, like you would do mm -hmm. too. You know, like I was there when there was no blueprint. A part of it is the way I grew up, but a part of it is I was there at the early stages. So I'm kind of like an OG, not only from my previous life, but also within this this new life as well, so. So what's the previous life? How did you even get into the whole food world and restaurants and all that? I grew up in a restaurant. I grew mm -hmm. up in a Korean restaurant here in, in LA and um, around food my whole life. But being Asian, as you know, you know, you can't just say, I want to be a chef. Right, right, right. You got to own. Yeah, yeah, you got to own. You got to <laughs> right, own right, or right, be a right. doctor, right? <laughs> and uh, so uh, I tried the traditional path, but I wasn't made for that. Kind of like bottomed out in like my early 20s, mid 20s. Um, and then like at, at the lowest point, you know, where shit was just not going right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was watching a show called Emerald. Mm -hmm. uh, Emerald Lagasse? Bam! Emerald Lagasse, bam! Okay, okay. But his first show, it was a really small show, just like this, like one camera, two camera, in, in a tight kitchen. Oil. You could use butter as well. What do you want to do is saute that onion. I don't know, man. Something about it spoke to me. My whole life just changed on a dime. Where? Yeah. You know, I grew up around Korean food, but... Mm -hmm. And hamburgers and milkshakes and stuff like that, but I'd never been around, like... French food and, mm -hmm. and, and white chef coats. So went to the bookstore, started researching what this whole world was about. Mm. Moved out to New York. I was lucky my cousin was doing his residency. He was the doctor. Okay. He was doing his residency. So I he gave me his futon for two fifty a month. Oh damn. In the middle of Manhattan and then I started working at restaurants and everything changed. Did you go to actual like culinary school? I did, did you? I oh, did. Shit. I went to the Culinary Institute of America. It's in uh, High Park, New York. Okay, so how many how many restaurants do you own right now? Cause I feel like you own like 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 10 restaurants or something. Yeah, I think there was one point where I had 10. I, um, I've closed a couple, I've opened a lot. I have uh, Chego, A-Frame, Alibi, Local, Best Friend, Bogey Taqueria, so six restaurants. Damn. And then um, four trucks. You know what's crazy? Also, I feel like every Still time- Still broke as fuck, though. <laughs> <laughs> Still broke Anyone as fuck. in the restaurant industry, you know what I'm talking hey, about. Hey, man, the restaurant struggle is so difficult, so man. You know, real. my family had a Thai food restaurant for 20 yeah. years, you, so know? you know? I know, and-, and You and just make enough to survive. Exactly. You know, like, to keep your life going, but you, you're never building you know, beyond it, that. It's so yeah. tough because like we, we survived a lot of restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, especially in our little area, there was like maybe like 10 Thai food restaurants yeah. and we're the only ones that really survived that long. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it was like we were barely surviving. Yeah. It's weird, you know, I don't want to get too mystical, but being in the restaurant industry, you get wealth in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. right? Like you never really have to worry about your bills. You're always surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. You're always surrounded by smiles and laughter. And you got this like currency of like, it's like having views on, on your show, right? Like you have this currency of fan mm -hmm. relationship, but um, 
But you're never really getting ahead because you're, you're always buying, you know, your product goes rotten, you're always mm -hmm. buying new stuff. You always have to have people, but you own a shoe shop, you could run it on your own. Right. But a restaurant, you always have to have five cooks back there, True. three waiters, all that. That's what I like about you, man, because like you can tell that um, you really, like you love yeah. what you do and yeah. you don't do it necessarily for like, you know, like the money or like yeah. the fame or nothing like that. Um, I like that you always, uh, you're always trying to give back to the yeah. community, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I like, ain't got nothing to give back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that comes from being a restaurateur. I'm sure your parents are probably like that in some way, being a chef. Um, like we're in this field where we're surrounded by food, right? And mm -hmm. all we want to do is feed people. Mm -hmm. So it's like this weird thing where we're always giving. Like, oh, I see you in the restaurant. I want to give you a thing. I want to pour you a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. I just got these strawberries and you got to try them. Right, and right. we don't even think in terms of like uh, that costs money to us. Mm -hmm. It's just in terms of like sharing. So I think for people that just yeah. that love food, especially, yeah. it's like you love food. So you want people to experience this yep. like bomb thing that you're tasting yep. or this experience you're having, you know? Um, that's kind of like your spot local, right? Like, yeah. like, tell us about that spot. Well, local's going through a transition right now, but I still think the value of local and the purpose of local is extremely relevant and, and, power, and strong. And local is a, a chef-driven fast food restaurant made with grains and natural ingredients mm -hmm. built within our inner cities. Mm -hmm. And the, the main project is to not only feed and, and give nutrition to the neighborhood, but also employ in the neighborhood and mm. provide pathways for change mm -hmm. you know like the problem really is is like a lot of us made mistakes in our past mm -hmm. but because of that you can never get a job in the future mm. and if you can't open those pathways then the world's never going to change mm -hmm. so just because someone has a felony record doesn't mean that when they're 35 they're the same person when they were when they were 18. totally you know? does that make sense you totally know? and so but the problem is they're always going to be treated like when they were 18 and mm -hmm. they robbed the domino's guy you know mm -hmm. what i mean and so um, what local is trying to do is say, hey man, you know, shit happens in life. Mm -hmm. For example, our, our hiring process is name and phone number. We don't look at background, we don't really? look at nothing like that, you know? So we tried the retail side. It, it did well for the first year and a half. We're in, into catering now and we're coming up with a new kind of 3.0 model of um, figuring out what to do with it. That should be revealed like pretty soon, you know? I like that, um, you know, it's kind of like, it's a big emphasis on kind of like uh, giving like fresh and different ingredients to inner cities and stuff. Cause yeah. when I was younger, I mean, one of my- yeah, you grew up in Paramount. I grew up in Paramount, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like Paramount, well, like Long Beach and then Paramount. Yeah. And I just remember like being broke. And even though, you know, my mom, we didn't have a lot of money. She would always make sure like the food was good regardless, yeah, you know? Always. And I feel like a lot of people that grow up broke or grow up in the inner cities, you don't really have access yeah. to different types of food, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's why, man, one of the main things I spent my, my money on. That's how my family was too, man. Yeah. My family, I think they owed so many bills. Everything was on COD, right. you know? Yeah. But our refrigerators were full of shit. Right, man. right, right. <laughs> you know? Man, cause, man, cause like in Asian yeah. families, bro, when you can't really express yourself, yeah. I feel like that's it's how that's how moms express themselves. Asian yeah. moms that can't communicate, they're like, they want to cook for you to show their love yeah. for you, you know? That's for sure. The main thing I spend my money on now is like food I couldn't afford when I was little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, shit yeah. I saw on the Food Network where I'm like, yo, I don't know what this is, but I, I want to eat this, you yeah. know? I mean, I can't even imagine what it was like for our parents, like, to move to a different country, not even know the language, mm -hmm. with no money in your pocket. I mean, that whole like, that whole fairy tale, that shit is real, you know? And then life just starts from there and you got to figure it out. And they, I'm sure for them, it's like just keeping up with this whole new reality mm -hmm. and the only thing to keep you grounded and somewhat figure out your connection to yourself and your your past is through your food. Yeah, you totally. Know? I mean, especially for like, for, for Asian Americans, right? It's like, that's why yeah. younger Asian generations they really kind of like hold on to that as yeah. something special because like, you know, we might not speak our native language yeah. necessarily, but we know how some kimchi is supposed yeah. to taste or, you know, or some or some uh, people get really upset when you like... Uh, pot to you. Or so mm -hmm. my, my pot to you. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so speaking of, all right, so speaking of the spot you just opened in Vegas. Yeah, right uh, here. Best friend, what's like, so what's the story behind this, this location? Yeah, this is... Uh... This is my biggest shit to date, man. This, this is, is definitely bigger than like, you know, yeah. your food trucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bigger than food truck. Where, uh, you know, it's uh, it's like opening a show on Broadway. That's mm -hmm. how it feels in Vegas, Okay. Man. Like, I never experienced anything. You know, like being from LA and 
flying back and forth to New York and doing the whole culinary world. You know, mm. I've been around some shit. You know, yeah. I've been around and, and I've seen the world through through some lenses. And um, but this was a whole different experience, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like the world comes to Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the spotlight is right there. And so I knew I had to bring it. You know, like I couldn't come in here like soft and like give people ways to you know figure out where like it's wrong or not good enough. So really fought for the budget, got a huge 9,000 square foot restaurant. Which is beautiful. Yeah, you know, spent millions of dollars on this restaurant, but instead of doing all the the standard expected things, mm -hmm. use that money to get really great artists. We have Patrick Martinez, mm. who does all of the social activist neon work. Oh, we yeah. We have him in the front in the liquor store. Recreated a Koreatown liquor store in the front. Yes. We did a lot of visuals as far as the photography goes mm -hmm. and the murals. So you have all the elements of any top-notch fine dining restaurant, big mm -hmm. open kitchen, chef's table, huge bar. But it's funky. But it's funky. Yeah, yeah. got got some flavor in yes. there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that 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 was that's this restaurant. It's called Best Friend. It's in the Park MGM. Uh, this whole project is a new project for Vegas, where it's really centered around the culinary and the shows. Lady Gaga just opened mm -hmm. her residency here. It's kind of like you, bro. It's a mix of the culinary and and the street funk. And the street funk. Everything. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. We have a DJ booth. We have all 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 my friends coming through and playing up there. That's dope. You want to give us a little tour? Yeah, let's go. Let's walk around. Right, so, this is like our what we call our reverse speakeasy. So okay. the bar's up front. Damn, okay. Yeah, so this is a bar, it's a liquor store, you can buy anything you want. You I'm not gonna lie, I walked in and I was like, is this is this the spot? Like, is this the restaurant? <laughs> I know, is this the whole restaurant? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, this is a Koreatown liquor store, mm -hmm. any LA liquor store. Again, it's the high and the low, right? Right. All the stickers, mm -hmm. and all the Asian snacks, and then you got this beautiful chinchilla. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> With a big old ass, a big old ass. Yes, yeah, all the big fake <laughs> asses. Yeah, right here. Here. <laughs> And we got our merch and all that. And then another big thing I like about this store is what we've done with the slushies. Mm -hmm. So what I've learned in Vegas is that, you know, they drink the whole big frozen yards, but usually they put in kind of low grade liquor into that. Mm. We're putting in like top shelf stuff. Okay, right? got the, oh, the Jamie and Ginger slushy? Jamie and Ginger Man. Oh, we're gonna get you one of those once we turn the machine on. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so you come through this liquor store, people are a little bit discombobulated as they come through, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. you know, they're smiling, they're like, I don't know what to do, and then this is our host table. I see, I was just about to ask, so this is where you're like, oh, table four, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, I'm mm. Tim, and I have a reservation for two at Damn. six o'clock, and then our host, we got Trojans over there. So. <laughs> can you actually buy like the <laughs> You can buy anything, stuff? anything. You really? Can, anything you can touch, you can buy. Wow. So, yeah, so um, I have noticed that the purple ones and, and the yellow ones have gone down. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure you have the condoms on deck in Vegas because you know prostitution is legal out here. You know about that, right, dog? You know <laughs> yeah, about yeah. that. That's how they got me to get the, the restaurant here. <laughs> Oh, you got the Swisher Sweets up there. We got there. the Swishers, we got the Black and Miles, we got uh, lighters, we got everything. Hilarious. So, um, yeah, you can buy anything you want here. And then, and then, so they'll check you in here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people will hang out here wait for the friends. Then you go in through this experience. Later tonight, you'll, you'll see we put subwoofers everywhere. So the place is bumping. That's dope. You walk into this red tunnel. And then we have, we shot a, uh, our photographer Travis Jensen shot a two minute video of like all little things of LA and Koreatown. So you come in through here mm -hmm. and then boom, you enter the restaurant. Damn. We have our kind of lounge area here. Mm -hmm. We have our kimchi pots. <laughs> we have these two murals which were painted by an artist named Fung. And what she did was she took a lot of people that inspire her from her work, social activism. That's dope. And then um, we have Rocky Rivera and Bamboo, some social activist rappers out of the Bay in LA. Very cool. If y'all ever come uh -huh. to LA, make sure you go to the Kogi truck and yeah. get you some Kogi tacos, man. Thank you. Fire. Yeah. And we sell those here too. You do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, you no know, beautiful open kitchen. Uh huh. This is our. Uh, our chef de cuisine. Okay, with the kimchi right, on with deck. The kimchi on <laughs> deck. <laughs> with the kimchi on deck, that's Arvin right there. Hey, sorry, hey. Up, hey. Hey, 
Hey man, not gonna lie, I wanted to do the interview just so you could hook me up with some free food. That's it. Oh, We're not man. even gonna air the interview, dog. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm on the cutting room floor. I'll lie. <laughs> hey, hey, real talk. Thank you to my boy Roy Toy for being down for the interview. And thank you for dinner, of course. Hell yeah. For sure, man. Welcome, best friend. Hey, it. make sure y'all go to Best Friend. Make sure y'all go to all his other restaurants. This man knows what he's doing. Um, hey man, that's it. I appreciate all right. you. All right. So. <laughs> Alright y'all, I hope you liked that video, and like I said, this video was brought to you by the Bump app. It's the dopest app for buying and selling your new clothes, or your old clothes, or your vintage stuff, or your shoes, and I got a lot of shit I need to get rid of because I just have too many tings. So uh, I like the Bump app because um, they got dope shit, like first of all, you can use their filter system. So it's like, you know, you can filter through everything for what you're looking for, like let's say I want something from Bape, and I want something red from Bape, hit apply, and then boom, all the red Bape things pop up. And, um, and you know, it's all through PayPal, so you know you're not gonna get dicked over. You know what I'm saying? So if there's an issue, you know, you're good to go. And what's cool about Bump is you can like message people and you can start these little like group chats. You know, you can start a little group of people. Let's start a group right now, let's see. Um, all right. Hold on a second. Start a little group. Hey, guess what? Y'all can actually join this group chat I'm making right now. You know, just click the link in the description below. Come be in my group chat and we'll, you know, talk about stuff. Okay, shoes from library. Let's see. Choose a little picture here. Okay. All right, so now I created a group, and now like people can join my group, and we can talk about you know buying buying all types of sweats and shit. Also, what's cool about Bump is you can find people to be like a proxy for you, and basically wait in line whenever the exclusive shit is about to drop. So let's see, go to the filters again. And uh, let's see, let's just go with the off-white. And, uh, you know, because I'm grown, I don't have time to be, you know, standing in line for shit like that. So I go off-white, proxy, apply. And now, you know, here you go. A whole bunch of people who just have already done the job for you, all right? So if you're trying to buy or sell some clothes, check out Bump. It's on iOS and it's on Android. And I am on it for real. Timothy De La Ghetto is my name on there. And I am like, for real, for real, gonna list a bunch of clothes because I just need to get rid of a bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, follow me on there. Buy my clothes. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I really am gonna, gonna be listing this stuff. So, check out my page. Follow me. And uh, thanks for watching. The royal penis is clean, your highness. Thank you, king shit.